What's new in FastDraw Viewer 1.3? If you've watched our previous videos or already used FastDraw Viewer, you're probably familiar with most of its tools and features. Now, we're going to very quickly show you the most important tools and features that were added in FastDraw Viewer version 1.3. The major changes are grid view mode and select deselect operations, operations with multiple files, undo, reversing file operations, highlight inspection mode, Sharpening for display, you're going to create two presets for sharpening by choosing the radius and amount of sharpening. Contrast curve modes, one of four standard colorimetric tone curves, or variable contrast tone curves. And also, the speed of Fast Draw Viewer 1.3 on modern computers is 10 to 20% higher than for previous versions. Now, when you launch FastDraw Viewer, it will, by default, start in grid mode. This means that when you plug in a memory card or open a folder from your hard drive, the main window will display a grid of thumbnails of the raw and JPEG images that are contained in the current folder. Grid mode is meant for quick preliminary browsing and allows one to perform operations with multiple files. So, in grid mode, you can browse images. You can switch on the raw histogram and statistics for better evaluation. Select and deselect images and perform labeling, rating, copy, and move operations, as well as run external programs on a group of selected files. Images in the grid can be filtered by rating and label. Press this small funnel icon. For a quick but still reliable evaluation of raw images, even in grid mode, FastDraw Viewer will, for every raw image presented in grid mode, allow you to see the raw histogram, the raw exposure statistics, and detailed EXIF data. To activate and toggle the display of these data, you have to press this small graph icon at the top right corner of the grid panel or using the corresponding keyboard shortcuts, Shift-G, or using the menu. Of course, these panels should be open beforehand. To select deselect an image from the grid, Command and Control click on the image's preview panel, or set a checkmark in the checkbox in the upper right-hand corner of the preview thumbnail. The checkbox appears for the files that are currently unmarked when you hover a mouse over its preview. The checkbox is permanently visible for those files that are already marked. Or, you can select deselect an image through the actions and menu, select batch, or using the corresponding keyboard shortcuts. You can also select a consecutive group of images. All you have to do is choose the first image in the group, by command control clicking on its thumbnail, or using a keyboard shortcut, and the last image, by shift clicking on its thumbnail. If the first file in the group was not chosen, then the group starts in the first file in the folder. You can invert the selection that was made using a keyboard shortcut, command control I by default, or through menu, select batch, invert selection. If you need to select all the files in a folder, just use a keyboard shortcut, Command or Control A by default, or through Menu, Select Batch, Select All Files. The selection can be saved to the file or loaded from a file. As you can see, the previews of the marked files have a different background color. This color can be changed through Preferences, Interface, Selected File Background. You can perform batch operations with a group of selected images, such as rotation, assigning labels and ratings, copy or move, opening the selected images in an external program for further processing, moving to rejected. If you change your mind after performing some operations, now you can undo all file operations, copy, move, rejected, all operations performed with ratings and labels, and group orientation changing. Now, how do you undo? Menu File Undo, or Command and Control Z. By the default setting, the depth of the undo history is 50 steps, and the undo history is cleared when the folder that is being looked at is changed. These default settings can be changed to the Preferences, Copy, Move, Reject. You can tune the grid view features and appearance. As usual, this is accessible through the gear icon. You can switch to single file view at any time by double-clicking on any image from the grid or pressing the G key. Toggling the G key allows you to switch between grid view and single file view mode. By the way, you can perform all selection batch operations using the film strip the same way you can with a grid. The file context menu, right click, is available both in grid and film strip view. That was about browsing and working with multiple files. We've also added a couple of very useful tools for evaluating raw images. From the very beginning, FastDraw Viewer offered a tool to evaluate shadows based on raw data, Shadow Boost. Now we've added another raw based tool, this one to evaluate the highlights, Highlights Inspection. Incidentally, when culling with RAW, images that are underexposed may look better. More contrast, more saturation, they look more attractive. This is an especially pressing problem when shooting an ETTR, which is why I recommend culling based on the RAW histogram and exposure statistics, not the look of the image. 
Using the highlights inspection, one can reliably evaluate if there is enough detail in the highlights and if it is worth it to try and recover these highlights. It can be accessed through the bottom bar, or using a keyboard shortcut, by default it's Shift H, or through the menu. The same as with the shadow boost amount, the highlights inspection can also be tuned and controlled through the preferences, image display, highlight inspection section. We've also added an on-screen sharpening tool. While being processed in a raw converter, raw images generally have some sort of sharpening algorithm applied to them. This is true for both out-of-camera JPEGs and offline raw conversion. In FastDraw Viewer, the sharpening is applied only for display. This tool allows you to estimate how much one can expect the image to be improved by applying the sharpening tool in a raw converter or some image editing software. The button for it is right here at the bottom bar in the same group with the focus peaking, shadow boost, and highlight inspection. The sharpening tool is also available through menu, view, screen sharpening, or a keyboard shortcut. The default shortcut is S. FastDraw Viewer allows you to create two presets for sharpening by choosing the radius and amount of sharpening. Also, you can choose if you want to apply on-screen sharpening to JPEGs as well. You can tune the on-screen sharpening tool through the same image display tab in the Preferences section, On-Screen Sharpening. About the adjustment of the contrast curves. FastDraw Viewer allows you to select either one of four standard colorimetric tone curves, sRGB, gamma 1.8, and 2.2, L-star, or to use variable contrast tone curves, the default setting. To switch between these two types, you can use Preferences, Image Display, Contrast Curve Type. In Variable Contrast Curves mode, one can also choose the contrast setting on the next file. Variable Contrast mode allows you to adjust the image contrast in grades, 11 standard values for normal contrast, from negative 5 to positive 5, and 6 ultra contrast values, from U plus 0 to U plus 5. In this mode, contrast can be changed with the arrow-shaped buttons at the bottom bar. This replaces the drop-down with a list of tone curves that used to be there in previous versions, or through menu, or using the corresponding keyboard shortcuts. Increase contrast, K, Shift plus. Decrease contrast, Shift K, Shift minus. You can now also save variable contrast curve adjustment to decrease time spent during the conversion stage. To record variable contrast curve adjustment into an XMP sidecar file format that is acknowledged by Adobe Converters, turn on Preferences, XMP, write Adobe Compatible Contrast Blacks into XMP file. You can read in detail about all of FastDraw Viewer's tools and features that were mentioned, as well as not mentioned in this video, in the manual, which is included in the FastDraw Viewer distributive and also available on FastDraw Viewer's website for reading and for download in PDF format. Also useful are the quick start tips, which always pop up upon the first launch of FastDraw Viewer, and are also always available through menu, help, usage tips, or in PDF format at the FastDraw Viewer website. As per the increased speed of performance, please check it for yourself. Just download a 30-day fully functional trial version of FastDraw Viewer 1.3 and give it a try. As always, we appreciate your feedback, comments, and suggestions. If you have any, please send us an email or join our forum, and we will do our best to meet your expectations.